Hello all and welcome to the Leeds Children's Theatre Musical Theatre Quiz by me, Tony. Now this is going to be slightly different to the one that Amanda did as in you won't be seeing my face, thank God. So, as you all may know, I'm quite a bit of a geek when it comes to musical theatre. So I've put on a little quiz with a total point score of 30 points. Some of these will only actually get more than one point for an answer, but we'll see how we go. So I'm going to get straight into the quiz and we're going to start off with question one. And question one is what musical is about a man and a coat? Now that's a really, really easy question. I'll give you a bit of a clue for this one. It was written by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Okay, so make sure you've got a pen and paper ready for this anyway, because you can write them all down and they'll all be scored at the end. So, <clears throat> we now move on to question two. And this is, which musical is set in the Paris Opera House? Again, an easy question. Of course, they do get a bit harder later on. After the quiz, when I give the answers, I'm actually going to give you a bit of information about each answer, if there's any useful bits of information, or some stupid facts that I know about to show. So, let's move on, and we'll now go on to question three. Which is, Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote a show that skated its way into the Apollo Victoria. What was its name? Now, there's a bit of a clue in that one, as in the show that skated its way. So again, I'm giving you big clues on this, so hopefully you should all at least get some points on this quiz. Okay, question four actually follows on from this question. And that is, what show is now on at the same theatre? Now this one I know Amanda will get because she loves this show. And if you actually look on her phone, if she's still got it, she has this as a screensaver. Okay, let's move on to question five and it's what song was added to the stage show version of Evita after the film starring Madonna so of course there was the stage show quite a few years ago then it came out as a film starring Madonna but a new song was written for the film but then it was added into the stage show afterwards that's the name of the song that I'm after okay so we now move on to question six which is, name the four musicals that Bobel and Schoenberg have written. Now, two of these are quite easy to get. The other two, not so easy. I've seen three of them, but the last one I haven't seen. And there's a reason why I haven't seen it. Which, when you get to the answers, it'll give it away. Okay, so I'll give you a few more seconds on that one. I hope you're all doing quite well on this quiz. I found these questions reasonably difficult to source some of them and some of them do get a bit difficult later on okay we're now going to go to question number seven it is which musical is about the church of latter-day saints again which musical is about the church of latter-day saints and again this is a very good musical Question eight, spoiler alert on this one, because if you haven't seen it, it gives it away, the title of the show. So, which cat goes to the Heaviside Lair? Easy question if you've seen the show. And of course, if you haven't seen the show, I've just given away the ending. But the show's been around for that many years, I think most people have seen it. And by the way, no, I haven't seen the new film, and I don't think I want to either. Question nine. What was the name of the original Gillian Lynn Theatre? Or what was the original name of the Gillian Lynn Theatre? I'll give you a bit of a clue on this one. This is where Cats played for many years before it closed. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Which is question 10. The newly named Sondheim Theatre was originally called what? So the newly named theatre Sondheim, Sondheim Theatre, was originally called what? It's only been named this in the last few months as well. So that's a bit of a clue, hopefully, if you look at musical theatre. So let's move on to question 11. And it's an anagram time. 
What musical is in this anagram? And the anagram is Baleful Tooth. Okay, that there is a name of a musical in there. I actually used a, a computer program for this one because I could, couldn't work it out myself. But there is a musical and each letter is only used once. And you'll have no letters left over at the end. Next, we go to question 12. And we have, Carrie Hope Fletcher has recently starred in Les Miserables. But which role is she going to take next? And again, this show will be going ahead later in the year or probably early 2021, depending on the situation. Okay, so Carrie Hope Fletcher recently starred in Les Mis, but which role is she going to take next? Question 13, this is a hard question. And it is, in what musical does the song Times Are Hard For Dreamers in? Again, this is a very, very good song. Okay, so that's a hard one. I don't know if anybody will get that one, unless, of course, you've been to see the show. So we're now going to move straight on to question number 14. It's which new-ish musical has taken on social media and its effects? So last few years, a new musical was written and it deals with social media and the effects of what happens with social media and if things go wrong. Again, another very good show. Question 15. Which musical is set in Gander, Newfoundland? Now it says Newfoundland, but you don't pronounce it like that. It's actually pronounced Newfoundland. Okay, so which musical is set in Gander, Newfoundland? And this is again, it's another one of the new musicals. And this show actually doesn't have an interval. Okay, so we're now going to move on to question 16. And that is... Which musical changed the gender of the lead character in the 2018-2019 production? Now, a bit of a clue here. Janine should get this straight away. I'm not saying why, but Janine, if you are doing this quiz, you should get this one. Okay, we're now going to move on to question number 17. And it's in Sweeney Todd, the main character liked to murder people. But Sweeney Todd was not his real name. What was his real name? This is mentioned at the beginning and the end of the musical. And of course, the name is shouted at the end of the musical when he does a certain deed. Okay, on to the next question. And staying with the same musical, keeping with Sweeney Todd, which character kills Sweeney in the end? This, you can call him by two different names. I'll accept both of them as an answer. Okay, let's move on to question 19. This is where they start getting a bit harder, I'm afraid. So, Jay McGuinness and Kimberly Walsh appeared in Big the Musical. What other film musical will they star in? Star reuniting in August. I'll put my teeth in for that one. I'll say it again. Jay McGuinness and Kimberly Walsh appeared in Big the Musical. What other film musical will they star? Will they? I don't think I typed that question right, but you know what I mean. What other film musical will they star? Will the stars reunite in, in August? Hopefully, if everything goes to plan. But I think it's actually been delayed. This musical, Big the Musical, was on at the Dominion Theatre in London for a short period. These two played the lead characters in that. We're now going to move on to another musical. Question twenty. What is the name of the musical based on Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Or if we do it in the voice of the Monty Python, is what is the name of the musical? Which, if you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. Stupid questions sometimes. And the next question, question 21, is what classic musical features a girl named Kim who falls in love with a soldier? I'll give a big clue for this for any teenagers that may be doing this. This is my favourite musical. So that's a big, big clue. Question 22. And again, this one, Manda should know. The Duchess Theatre in London has the play that goes wrong, which is absolutely fantastic, by the way. What musical is playing over the road from there and is mentioned in the play at the start of the second act? 
if you've seen the play that goes wrong, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you could Google it, but I'd rather you didn't. See if you can guess. It's a well-known musical and it's quite a big musical, been going for quite a few years. On to the next question, <clears throat> which is question 23. We're getting on now, we've only got a couple more questions after this. It's, who wrote the music and lyrics to Kinky Boots? And who wrote the book of the musical? Now this is quite important, so you've got to get them both for this, not just one. Question 24. Tim Minchin has written two musicals. Name them. Simple question. So he's written two musicals. One of them is still going on in the West End. The other one has not appeared for quite a few years now. So guess both of them. Both of them were films, by the way, or originated as films. And lastly, we have question 25. What was the name of the sequel to Phantom of the Opera? Nice and easy. What was the sequel to Phantom of the Opera? Now, I can also safely say that there will not be a Phantom 3. But that comes clear if you've seen this show. So, that covers everything there, and now we can actually move on to the answers. So, I hope you made notes of absolutely everything, and we're going to start scoring the quiz. So, are you all ready? If I remember, I will give you some notes on about final facts about each show, and interesting bits of information. And of course, we start off with the first one. See, I've changed the colour now, so it's a bit more dramatic. We have grey for the answers. So question one, what musical is about a man and a coat? And of course, that's Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat. Now that originally started off as a 20 minute production in a school that Andrew Lord Ribber was asked to, wrote, to write. And of course, it then became longer and longer. It went to half and then to about 40 minutes. And now it's actually a full blown musical. Okay, so I hope you got that one right because that was one of the easy ones. The next one is, which musical is set in the Paris Opera House? Now, there's a big clue in that one, of course, the opera. And of course, it is Phantom of the Opera, which starred Michael Crawford and Sarah Brightman. When he wrote the musical, Andrew Lloyd Webber actually based the character Christine on his then wife, Sarah Brightman, who used to be a singer for Top of the Pops, which is going back. Your parents will know about that. They'll probably remember it themselves. I think she was in Hot Gossip. And she married Andrew Lloyd Webber, realised she could sing and sing very well. So he wrote the musical Phantom of the Opera with her in mind. I know, I know some stupid things. Question three. Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote a show that skated its way into the Apollo Victoria. What's its name? And that is, of course, a, a musical about trains, which is called Starlight Express. And again, when they built that theatre for, well, they built the seating for Starlight Express, they actually installed a 10-ton bridge that moved and moved the skaters around the theatre. And there was a little paddock area that when I went to see it with Edna, who used to be a member of Children's Theatre many years ago, we were sat in what they called the paddock area. And that area you couldn't actually get out of once the show started because the skaters skated on stage, behind you, on the circle, all around the theatre. It was an amazing show, really colourful. You can still see the show, but you have to go to a place in, called Bowden in Germany, where it's the only place that it's still playing constantly. OK, so let's move on to the next one. Question four, following on, what show is now on at the same theatre? And this, of course, is Wicked. The show Wicked, which is about the Wicked Witch of the West. Now, the Wicked Witch of the West's name is Elphaba, which is actually made up of the initials of the guy who wrote The Wizard of Oz, which is a guy called L.F. Baum. Now, if you put those initials and use them like lowercase, L F B, L F B, Elphaba. And that's how he got the name of the lead character for Wicked. Again, crazy things I know. But I think Manda knows, well, I know that Manda knows that one as well, so it's not that crazy. So, on to the next question. It is, what song was added to the stage show version of Evita after the film starring Madonna? And that song is called You Must Love Me. That was actually put into the show 
just before Evita's death and she sings it to her husband Peron at the time. It is actually quite a good song, even though Madonna's singing it. Now, the other stupid thing about the Evita film is when Madonna was in it, there's a song called Another Suitcase in Another Hall. Now, that is actually set for The Mistress. But because Madonna liked it that much, she decided she wanted to sing it in the film. And of course, Madonna being Madonna got her own way. So she sings it in the actual film. But if you ever go see it on stage, it is the mistress who sings that song and not Evita. So if you ever go to see it after seeing the film, you'll see it the correct way and not the way Madonna decided she wanted it to be. So although the film's good, I was a bit upset about that part that she got to sing that part when it should have been somebody else. Especially when she got an extra song called You Must Love Me. So she was a bit greedy there. So, next question. Question six. Name the four musicals that Bobel and Schoenberg have written. And in order, they were Les Miserables, which is, of course, based on the French Revolution. Then came Miss Saigon, which is, of course, an amazing show. Then we had Martin Guerre. And then we had The Pirate Queen. Now, I've seen Les Mis, I've seen Miss Saigon, all those quite a few times. I've seen Martin Guerre t- twice, once in London and once in Leeds, which is actually two different shows because it didn't do so well in London. So they rewrote the whole show and redid it again at the West Yorkshire Playhouse where it premiered. And I prefer the second version, which is the new version. But Mavis, we all know I lo- love our Mavis, she prefers the original version. And many times in the car we've argued which is the best version. And I'm right, it's definitely the second one, but she'll say it's the first one. And the last one, The Pirate Queen, I've not seen because it never actually st- actually came to Britain. It only actually stayed in USA. Don't know why, but the songs are actually quite good from it. They did do a concert version of it last year in London, but the tickets were extortionately priced, so I couldn't go. But I would like to see that one at some point. OK, so let's move on to question seven. And which musical is about the Church of Latter-day Saints? And that is, of course, The Book of Mormon. Now, that is a show that kids should not go see because it's not the kind of thing they should be seeing. But one funny bit is the guy who plays the lead, Arnold Cunningham, is actually the guy who does the voice of Olaf the Penguin in Frozen, which is, of course, Josh Gad. Bit of stupid trivia there. So we now move on to question number eight. And we have the spoiler alert. Which cat goes to the heaviside layer? And that is, of course, Grizabella, the glamour cat. Of course, she sings the song Memory. Once she sings that song, everybody knows that she's been hard done by. She's had a hard life, so of course she's going to go to the heavy side layer. She could have ended it at that point, but no, they've still got a few songs to go. So all the other songs that are sung with the cats, they shouldn't have even bothered because as soon as they hear her sing, that's it, she's gone. Okay, next one. Question nine. What was the original name of the Gillian Lynn Theatre? Now, this is quite a difficult one because it hasn't been called this for ages and it used to be called the New London Theatre. And the New London Theatre is where cats originated. And of course, if you saw cats in London, the cats came out from under the seats and all over the place. So it was a bit of a, a weird experience. It was, it was quite new to everything. So it was it'd never been done before. Of course, Cats is a good show. On to the next one. The newly named Sondheim Theatre was originally called what? And it was called The Queens. And that is, of course, it closed down last year or the year before, actually 2018 or 19, I think it closed down. And that's where Le Mis had been playing for many, many years. But they closed it down to redo the whole theatre. Le Mis moved over to the Gilgud Theatre to do a concert version. And hopefully, when it all gets back together, they're all moving back to now call the Sondheim Theatre to do the newer version of the show. A lot of people are upset though because in the version they're bringing back to the uh, the Sondheim Theatre is not the revolving stage one. So people prefer the old version that the Queen's had with the revolving stage and he's had it that, that for many years, but they're taking it away. I'm not happy about that either. To me, that is the original version of Lemmy's and that's how it should stay. But we can only see. On to the next question. And we have question 11. And what musical is in this anagram, Baleful Tooth? Again, this is quite a difficult one. And the answer is Bat Out of Hell. Now, some of you may not know that is even a musical, but yes, it is. And I must say, it is absolutely brilliant. 
I saw it at the Dominion Theatre and it, I think it's the way forward, the way musicals are going to go. It's done with uh, projections against screens, video cameras, everything. It is really, really good. So hopefully you got that one. Baleful Tooth is bat out of hell. Next one is question 12. <clears throat> and Carrie Hot Fletcher has recently starred in Les Mis, but which role is she going to take next? And that is Cinderella, of course. So that's going to start, and it's a musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber, so that's going to start uh, next year, I think. Now, the thing about Carrie Hot Fletcher, her brother is Tom Fletcher, who, of course, you know, from, I don't know if he's in McFly or Busted, I can't remember which one is, but Carrie Hot Fletcher and Tom Fletcher are brother and sister. And if you've got young kids and you watch uh, The Baby Club, you've got Giovanna Fletcher, which is, of course, her sister-in-law. So quite a performing family there. We now go on to question number 13. And this is, in what musical does the song Times Are Hard For Dreamers in? Now, this is a musical that not many people have seen, but myself and Mavis went to see it at the Alhambra Theatre. And I must admit, the first act was weird. The second act was better, and it's Amelie the Musical which is, of course, based on the film by Abilene. Now, if you get a chance, Google the song Times Are Hard For Dreamers, sung by Audrey Brisson, or Audrey Bryson, whatever they'd like to call her. It's a really good song, and it's quite catchy. So it's one of the songs that stood out when we went to see the show, and that's what stuck in my head since, even when I went to see it about last year. But have a Google of that song on YouTube. It's quite good. Question 14. Which new-ish musical has taken on social media and its effects? And that is, of course, Dear Evan Hansen. Again, it's just been announced on the news that that show's not starting again until 2021. So if you want to go see that, you're going to have a bit of a wait. I know some kids at Children's Theatre have seen it and they do like it. Okay, so let's move on to question number 15. I'll also let you know at the moment, the time in my house is it's midnight. So I'm actually doing this recording at midnight. So it's quite late. Actually, it's five past midnight. So I've got about another 10 minutes of this and then I think it might be bedtime for me. But I decided to do this late when the kids are asleep, obviously. I don't want to be woken up. So question 15, which musical is set in Gander, Newfoundland? And that show is called Come From Away. Now that is a show that's at the Phoenix Theatre in London and it's set on the 9-11 bombings. Now, it's quite a sad subject, but this musical, the music is amazing. It's got an Irish thing to it, although Gander Newfoundland is in Canada, there's a lot of Irish descendants there, and it stems from a lot of the Irish music. Now, if you don't go see it, listen to the music. The words of the songs are amazing. It's how a group of people all came together when 30 different planes had to land, and they had a, a, so like they had a population of about 3,000, and he sent triple that population to 9,000 overnight because all the planes couldn't land in USA, so they had to land elsewhere. And that's where a lot of the planes went. Again, fantastic musical. I know Dan went to see it, and I'm quite jealous of that, and I've told him that. So, question 16. Which musical changed the gender of the lead character in 2018-19? And as I said before, this is the one that Janine should get because she was in it, but of course not the London version. And that show is called Company. Now, of course, the lead character was a boy called Bobby, but Bobby can use, be used for a girl, and of course, that's what they did when they released it in London. Again, I think it's quite a good show. It's it's underrated. People don't see it that much, but to me, I think it's quite a good show and should be seen. And there's one person who always plays a good part, Patty LuPone, and she played one of the characters in it, and she is absolutely amazing in it, so you have to go see it. Question 17. In Sweeney Todd, the main character liked to murder people, but Sweeney Todd was not his real name. What was his real name? And his real name is Benjamin Barker. Now, if you know some of the songs, you'd have been screaming at the screen at that one because you know it from one of the songs. Now, of course, when this originally went on uh, Broadway, it was uh, George Hearn and somebody called Angela Lansbury, if you've heard of her. Of course, she was in Murder, She Wrote. And also did the voice of Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast and sings the classic song from Beauty and the Beast. Sweeney Todd, again, it's a brilliant show. We did it years ago at the Civic before we moved to the Carriage Works. When we started the week's run, the back of the set was green. By the end of the week, it was red. And if you know the story of Sweeney Todd, you'll know why.
Okay. The next question, question 18, keeping up with Sweeney Todd, is which character kills Sweeney in the end? And the character's name is Tobias, although I will accept Toby. Now, Toby is, of course, meant to be a young boy, but of course, it's always played by a young shadow in his early 20s, because some of the songs in there are quite difficult. Again, it's a lovely character, is Tobias, and he's hard done by in the whole show. He gets locked away and isn't allowed to do things, and he realises things are missing. You have to see it to understand the show. Next, we go to question 19, which was quite a difficult one because I typed this wrong, but I'm not changing it now. And Jane McGuinness and Kimberly Walsh appeared in Dig the Musical. And what the full musical will they, will they, I still can't say it. Which musical will the stars reunite in in August? And that is going to be called Sleepless the Musical, which is actually based on the show Sleepless in Seattle, which starred Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. And of course, they appeared in Big Musical before that, which of course, again, starred Tom Hanks, but not Meg Ryan. Now, I must admit, I'm a bit unsure of Sleepless the Musical. I don't know any of the music from it, so I don't know if it's going to be any good. But Big the Musical, I'd like to have seen. There were some good songs, but again, is it getting a bit too much like they'll turn anything to anything into a musical at the moment? We'll have to see. Question 20. What is the name of the musical based on Monty Python and the Holy Grail? I feel like saying what is the unladen velocity of a sparrow, if you know the show. And the show is Spamalot. Which again, I saw in London with Jo Pasquale and Bonnie Langford. Now Bonnie Langford, she was brilliant in it, but Jo Pasquale, he was not good at all. He just relied on his silly voice and tried to make jokes when they weren't needed. And forgot some of his lines as well. So... It's a good show, but you've got to get the right people to do the part, but it's so funny. If you like Python, you have to go see this. So let's go on to the next question. <clears throat> that is, what classic musical features a girl named Kim who falls in love with a soldier? Now, that is my favourite show of all time, and that is, of course, Miss Saigon. You cannot beat Miss Saigon. Now, that is based on an opera by Pacini, which is called Madame Butterfly, which, of course, is set many years before that. Now, Madame Butterfly was actually going to be called Madame Chrysanthemum. I'm glad it didn't because it was a bit of a mouthful, that one. But Miss Saigon is set during the Vietnamese War and the songs are absolutely amazing. Again, myself and Mavis have arguments. I think this is the best musical. She thinks Les Mis is the best. To me, they're both up there quite close, but Les Mis just has that edge for me. I don't know why it's just maybe the darkness of it. But the thing they have in that show is they have a helicopter on stage now. How can you not be impressed by that? It's just an amazing thing to see a helicopter land on stage. You know it's not real, but it still looks good. So, on to the next question. And that is, the Duchess Theatre in London has the play that goes wrong. What musical is playing over the road from there and is mentioned in the play at the start of the second act? And that show is Mamma Mia, which is, of course, the musical based on the hits of ABBA. I've not seen the stage show, but I have seen the film, and I must admit, I did actually quite like it, despite, well, despite the fact it's a jukebox musical, which they call it that way, it's basically songs from what somebody else has done. Bat Out of Hell is also a jukebox musical. But Mamma Mia, I did enjoy the second film, not so much, but it's watchable if you've got nothing else to do on an evening and you think, I'm bored, stick that on, have a sing-along. Nobody's watching. Just sing along to your heart's content. So, question 23. These are starting to get harder now. And it's, who wrote the musical and lyrics to Kinky Boots? And who wrote the book of the musical? Now, the person who wrote the music and lyrics is Cindy Lauper. And who wrote the book is Harvey Fernstein. So, Cindy Lauper used to be an 80s pop sensation. She did songs like Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, which is the song she's famous for and time after time and a few others i think she's an amazing singer and she was really good at writing musicals some really good songs in it and harvey fernstein is of course a famous actor who was in hairspray he also was in mrs doubtfire playing uh robbie williams's brother and he also did a show called torch song trilogy which is about a drag queen now that is a film that is well worth watching it's a bit heavy, not for younger kids, I'm afraid. So parents, kids, if you're watching, do not let your kids watch that film. But for the adults, it's really, really good. Okay, a useful 
information there. Next one, Tim Minchin has written two musicals, Lend Them. The first one, most of the young kids at Children's Theatre know this, it is Matilda. And of course, that's still running in London. The other one is Groundhog Day, which was a film starring Bill Murray. Now, I've only heard a couple of the songs in that, and it is okay, but I don't know if I want to see it. Now, Tim Minchin is actually known as a comedian, usually, and a very adult comedian. But whenever he's on stage doing his comedy, he never wears shoes, ever. He just goes on stage with his bare feet, with bright eye makeup, looks weird, but is hysterically funny. And his songs in Matilda are absolutely outstanding. He also appeared in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar when it was done as a concert version with uh, Mel C, I think it was, from the Spice Girls. And we now go to the last question, which is question 25. And what was the name of the sequel to Phantom of the Opera? Now that is called Love Never Dies. And of course, it follows on 10 years from the original Phantom of the Opera and it moves over to Coney Island in America where the Phantom is in charge of the whole of Coney Island. Again, I'm not going to give you the plot away to that one because something happens at the end that can guarantee there's no Phantom 3. Now, unfortunately, it didn't do well in London. Myself and Mavis again went to see it and we saw it twice, the original version and the rewritten version, and they were both fantastic. But unfortunately, Angelo Adwebo was suffering from prostate cancer at the time and he didn't put all his work into this show, so it didn't do as well as he anticipated. To me, it should come back because it's an amazing show. The music is beautiful. But again, he wasn't 100% there with that show. So hopefully you did well on that quiz and got all 30 points. If you did, please let us know by email and it'd be nice to see how many points you actually got. So short and sweet, I hope you enjoyed that quiz. And no doubt there'll be another one coming along soon, I think, by Manda. So take care, all Church Children Theatre. We are missing you and we can't wait to get back to doing the workshops. If you've got any ideas for a quiz, drop the uh, Leech Children Theatre email address a line and let them know if you want a quiz or if you want to do a quiz, let us know. We're always wanting more quizzes. Okay, take care, all, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.